Hi, I'm Case DeYoung from the Wilbur Ellis Company in an orchard outside of Sparta, Michigan. Newly planted orchard here. We want to cover a few different topics today briefly. We're going to review a little bit of tree planting and where the growers are currently. And then uh, we're going to take a look at some pheromone traps and discuss the insect control. And then just where we are with growth stages in apples. Okay, so we're watching these guys here plant trees at Josh Morris's farm outside of Sparta, Michigan. They're planting about 660 trees per acre. Josh has picked that amount just basically for the spacing of his equipment. He's running the sprayers and mowers down through there with the tractors he's got. And then based on the root stock he's, and the uh, varieties he's running, kind of keep that distance between the trees at about six, seven foot, just so they can fill their space and maximize production. And he's looking for upwards of 1,000 to 1,200 bushel per acre per year once these trees get full bearing. Okay, so now the tree has been planted, it's been in here for a couple weeks. We've had a lot of rain, and you can see down here that the soil is now settled around this, the, the tree. It's up here a little bit high in the graft union, which we're figuring is going to settle down a little bit more. Uh, Josh has got to come back through here and trim these trees back, and he'll take out some of these branches, and we'll talk about that later. And he's got some posts settled in here, we'll, we'll take a little shot of that here in a minute. And then we've got to string some wires, but basically at this point, you know, the trees are in, the, the crews come along and stomp the soil in around this thing. Now we're letting it settle and we'll come back with some pre-emergent herbicide here once the ground dries out. We've been pretty wet lately. And get the tractor through here with the herbicide sprayer and not get stuck. Okay, so we're going to cover briefly a little bit of trellising that's going on in this block. We've got this end post shoved in here at an angle. Uh, I'll let you decide what degree angle that is, if that's important to you. But anyway, they shove it down here with a hydro hoe. Got a guy to hold it. He just shoves it with a bucket down four or five feet, whatever you can get her in the ground. This is some pretty heavy clay, so it's a little difficult, but that way you don't have a whole auger. You don't have to worry about throwing cement in there. And when they finally remove this block, it's easier to pull it out. You probably can reuse that post again. So take that angle, they'll, they'll tie some wires to this, basically drill them through, and then we'll put a wire from here down to an anchor. There's a mobile home anchor screwed in the ground here to uh, help support this post, and then all the trellis wires will run off of this back up to these line posts and these line posts are set they try to keep them the growers between 40 and 50 feet apart depending on what the angle or the there's a hump in the field and you can see this one behind us there's quite a bit of a climb here so they keep them a little to get closer together as you go up over that hill then you get a little longer run and then keep them a little bit further apart but uh, we found this we're not worried so much about the economics of how many posts you have in here the idea is to support the trellis which is going to support the tree and then you don't have to worry about it blowing over in a windstorm. So Josh will run probably two or three wires here initially low to train the tree to, keep the tree from flopping around. Um, typically doesn't support them with a bamboo post or anything like that, but it's to secure them to the wire. And uh, we'll follow that throughout the season as we're trimming them and we're training the trees. I'm gonna just briefly cover some of the training or trimming of these young trees. You put them in here now. We'll wait until this block has got the trellis in and it, we're all done manipulating the tree before we start trimming it because as you can see, if you look through this block you'll see a lot of broken branches that happened from the time of the, when they dug the tree to when they packaged them to when they got planted so we'll wait till all that's done and then we'll come back and trim it but without cut, making any cuts I'm going to talk about some of the my theories at least behind these trimming these trees so I want to start out with the top I personally like to go ahead and head this tree about halfway up from the growth from this last limb We'll probably take these off of here just so we're not you know, taking a lot of the energy from what we want to grab the main pipeline of the tree, the central leader, and divert it to these because we start getting so we're more than half the diameter of the central leader that starts taking too much energy from the tree. And at this point in the tree's life, we're trying to get this tree to get up to our trellis height and fill the space between the trees so we can maximize our fruiting production there. So I'll take these off. We'll leave these little fruiting spurs. There's a broken limb here. We'll cut that off. And we'll probably take one of these out of here just because they're so big and give us that platform to start growing fruit on. But as the season goes on, we get the trellis in here, we'll come back and we'll whack on a few of these with the, the loppers and kind of show you what we're thinking about how we would trim these trees for this population per acre. Okay, so we're back in that same block of Ida Reds we started out our first series with. And we're going to use this one continually to kind of show the growth stages we're moving through. Generally, you know, a few days in early springtime and you move from one growth stage to the next, this one has been a long, drawn out, cold spring, wet spring, real wet spring. We've been, uh, I'm going to say 10 days, two weeks almost since we were in here the first time. 
and I gotta believe this is almost the first sunny day we've had since then. There might have been a shot of it one afternoon, but we're at half inch green. Uh, we got a picture of that there. Right now, the guys are covering up for uh, apple scab and powdery mildew, keeping them real busy in between the rains and the growth stages. And one of the biggest problems we have is the tree will outgrow the fungicides that's sitting on there. And then you get another apple scab infection, another series of rain days, and they can't get it covered up. So they got to get back in there real quick and try to get a fungicide back on that new green material that's sitting there. So not much going on in the way of insects. Uh, there's primarily disease control at this point. We get out here another week or so, we get into tight cluster, and we'll, we'll talk about the diseases we need to control, excuse me, the insects and diseases we need to control at that point. All right, well, let's talk about a little bit of insect control and monitoring for those. Uh, this is our standard Delta trap. I've got a sticky bottom here. This card usually comes folded together with all this sticky, goopy stuff, which might be a little hard to see from there, but uh, the, the insect will land on that, get stuck, and then we can come through and identify what, what the bug is, the, usually a male, adult male, and then you can use this grid if you've got a whole lot of them, it saves you a counting, time counting. We've got this L2 lure, we call it, it's got a pheromone in there that smells like a bunch of female moths, in this case it's oriental fruit moth, a lot of times this time of year we're putting up oriental fruit moth, which is not a, as big a problem for us here in the Sparta area as codling moth is. Codling moth is a real big driver for our insect control. So the scouts will come out, they have a flag like you see here. They'll flag out where the, uh, where the trap is, got a flag at the end of the row so as the stuff, the foliage starts filling in, they can actually remember which row they're in. We GPS locate where these sample, these traps are so we can come back and find them if, the, if something happens we need to have someone else come out and look. And then uh, between the flag there, and then this will actually be hung up a little bit higher, we've got it down you know, higher in the tree or up in this trellis, but we've got it down here for our video today. So pheromone trapping, scouting. We're primarily concentrating on coddling moth, or we're, we're dealing with an oriental fruit moth at this point. All right, so we're going to kind of wrap this up, cover what we, we saw today in this actually beautiful spring day. Uh, we had some tree planting. We showed what that orchard looked like after it had been planted for a couple weeks, and the ground had had a chance to settle with lots of rain. If that wasn't going to settle with that stuff, it wasn't going to settle. Talk about some trellising and the population of trees per acre. The block we're actually standing in here is planted at the same numbers of trees per acre and the trellis is up and it's been here for a little over a year now so it kind of gives you an idea what that next phase will look like. Got a lot of hum of orchard sprayers in the background. Got just basically just a whole wine that, that this time of year with insect control is not much but the fungicides going out about every other day or every day for apple scab and powdery mildew and like I said this is one of the first quiet sunny days we've had in a couple weeks so guys are getting covered up so they can keep those, those diseases off those apples and we've got a pretty product come October when we're picking them and putting them in the box. So I'm Case DeYoung with the Wilbur Ellis Company standing in an orchard in Sparta, Michigan.